First, a little tour of my home studio. Besides being a mess, because COVID caught us in the midst of a renovation, it has the blinds down on both windows to keep the ambient light level reasonably low so that we can control the lighting on the uh, individual video. This is a setup where I can give a stand-up lecture using a MacBook. And over here is where I can do sit-down activity using my iMac. We've got lighting, a uh, place to uh, light my face reasonably well, and additional task lighting right over the area where I'm going to uh, uh, do some uh, work on paper. I've got a shelf here above the paperwork area where I can show my where I can set my iPad down and I can video record what's being seen on the iPad. Okay, I've started a Zoom meeting and I've put it on record and I'm sitting at my desk with a uh, virtual background in behind. It's not really sunset, but I've got lighting up to either side of me here to, uh, to give reasonable light on my face. Uh, I'm using the microphone that's on my iMac, so with a little luck, the sound will come out okay. Now, doing this will allow me to have different things showing at different times. So I'll start by sharing the screen, and I'll share the whole desktop. Uh, I'm going to keep it shared for the entire time that I'm running. That way I don't have to worry about tracking whether I want to be screen sharing or not. So you'll still see my face up in the corner, uh, but we're going to concentrate on content for now. This screen isn't very much interesting content, but I might want to uh, do a slideshow and talk about, for instance, my desktop lecture configuration. Now, I'm a Mac guy. I've done all of this with Mac and iPad type stuff. I'm sure the same things can be done with a lot of the same hardware using Windows. So I hope that'll work out just fine. I'm using Zoom and I'm recording the lecture on Zoom. Uh, I'm getting my face information direct from the eyesight camera on the computer. I've made sure it's at eye level and well lit. And I'm getting sound from the internal mic. So all of that should be within range for, uh, for people with the usual collection of, of engineering hardware. Um, I can share in full screen or in a window, but I've gone to full screen so that I don't have to think too much about exactly what I'm sharing. I can concentrate just on what's on the screen in front of me. I'm using QuickTime to record a movie, uh, to, and I'm using that as a sneaky way to uh, get the uh, iPad stuff onto my screen. So if I break out of the display right now and go up and look over here, this is QuickTime running in full screen mode. It's showing what my iPad is seeing on its camera. My camera is set up on my iPad right now to record video and it's set to record 4K video. So it should be really high quality recording. Now, if I want to have this video available for later, if I want to move this to an even more high quality asynchronous mode delivery, then I'll want to get that 4K video recorded on the iPad. So I'm pushing the record button on the iPad. And now it should be recording that video on the iPad as well as recording it on my computer in the Zoom meeting. So I'll have both of those uh, resources later. Now, this is what I would use if I wanted to show something to my students. Uh, this is where I would do something that I would typically do writing on an overhead or more usually writing on a, a plain old fashioned blackboard. So I can go over here and if I had a pencil, I'd be dangerous. So I'll take my red pen and uh, this is a, the start of a Navier-Stokes equation. Di u di t plus u di u di x plus v di u di y plus w di u di z. And you'll recognize that as the convection, convective uh, derivative. This is changes with time. 
And these are changes that are happening to an individual particle of fluid because it's moving around through space. And I can draw diagrams the way I usually would for, say, a head and uh, flow curve for a pump. That might be a typical pump performance curve. That might be a typical system performance curve. And the actual operation happens right in there in that sweet spot where they intersect. So this opportunity with the iPad allows you to show students exactly what you would normally do if you were handwriting something out. You don't have to worry about fancy formatting of equations. It keeps you away from needing to manage the technology of a tablet because keeping track of what you want to say is hard enough. I happen to love these Lee Valley Veritas uh, writing pads. High quality paper, nice dots, easy to draw on, but that's just a plug. Likewise, if I wanted to show people something in a, an electronic circuit, this is one of the little itsy bitsy microcontrollers that we're going to use in MEC 217 this term. And I've got a push button and a potentiometer and a little tiny op amp on there and some resistors and wires and so on. And that's the reset button for this little microcontroller. Now you may have a hard time seeing all of that in detail with, uh, with the image zoomed out like that, but I can just very quickly zoom the iPad in so that we can see a little more detail of what's going on here. Now we've got a really good view of the button and the op amp and the potentiometer and everything that's going on here, where the wires and the resistors and so on are laid out. So I can, I can show students artifacts on my iPad and explain what I'm doing to them as I, you know, plug in wires, remove wires, and they can see my hands. And if I'm drawing, I can also gesture with my hands. And because I tend to talk with my hands a fair bit, that may be really important. I can point at things. I can just generally use a little body language there. Now, you've been seeing nothing but the sunset over on my, uh, my face. That's because I'm over here working with the iPad. But when I move back over, I slide back into view at the computer. And I can go and look at other things. Let's go back to this uh, lecture configuration uh, presentation. I can continue on talking about the various uh, points in my presentation here. Um, so where did I get to? I was using QuickTime. Whoops, I need to go back one. I was using QuickTime to record a movie and get the video from the iPad screen. I'm still recording on the iPad screen. Um, and there are some details to sort out to, to make that work. In addition, I can also, whenever I want to, uh, go over to another application. So for example, this is the uh, Arduino interface for programming that little microcontroller over there. So here you can see the source code. And over here is the output that's coming back from the serial monitor. And I could go and edit the source code. I could highlight things. I could point at stuff and talk about what I was doing, showing exactly what I'd be working on uh, at the computer as an example. So you get to see any application you want here. That, I think, might sum it up for the mechanisms I'd use to deliver something that looks like a lecture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the share now. So now you're just seeing me. And, uh, and now I'll stop the recording. And we'll see what we've got as a, a recording recorded by Zoom in addition to the recording recorded on the iPad. So thanks for watching.